Wow, it's time for another show full of tips and ideas from the sales growth leadership expert, Dean Akers. Known for his experience in hyper-growing companies and creating cultures for high-performance teams, here's Dean. Well, welcome to your Sales and Leadership Ninja Show. I'm your head ninja, Dean Akers, and each week I bring you a rant to stimulate your thinking in either the realm of sales and or leadership. Today's show is uh, one we're kind of deploying in our current company, um, and it's the title of today's show is It's Not If, It's When. So this is, uh, today I want to really focus on a fallacy that a lot of salespeople, even sales managers have. They're always chasing the deal. And somebody goes, well, we got to sell. We've got a responsibility to sell. I got it. I got it. You got to get sales. The thing is, you're always chasing a sale. So so the question I always ask myself is, what is I, if what I sell is going to actually be good for my customer? If the answer is yes, then I adopt the thought that it's not a matter of if they'll buy, it's a, only a matter of when they will buy from me. It's a huge different approach. I was on, I had a meeting this past week with a young man and he was talking about going out and the customers aren't buying or they bought from somebody else or they won't buy from him. And I go, well, are they the kind of customers that could do business with you? And he looked at me and says, what do you mean? I said, do they need what you sell? And he goes, yeah. I said, well, then it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when they'll be your customer. And so you have to work a strategy so that that comes true. That's what comes true. Now, I know you again, you have to get sales, but this strategy I want to share today will allow you to get more sales, but more importantly, hyper grow your sales with this opportunity. So it starts out by identifying your typical customer, then benchmarking them. First, make a list that you can work from. This customer, this list will include current customers and customers you want. We've talked in other shows and call this a CV list, but for this purpose today, I'm going to share with you how valuable it is because what happens is, is you start assigning values to those customers. And A, you know they can buy from you. So once you know they know you can buy from you and you know their value to you, you can be infinitely patient. And if you're doing your job, you'll start closing pretty quick, some longer, but you'll finally get most of these customers. And I want to share the story that was true for me and that allowed me to launch my career. I was uh, thrown out into the worst territory in our company when I was a very young man in my 20s. Previous people had retired actually not retired quit because they couldn't make a living as a matter of fact they made less than i made as a trainee so the last gentleman quit and they said well dean you've got to go up there now well let's paint the picture this territory was a hundred miles away from a hundred miles away from our office the three biggest competitors had offices in the territory they had physical facilities And oh, by the way, all three of those competitors were regarded as number one, two, and three. We were somewhere down in that mix past number three with our products. So I was pretty well screwed. And everybody had quit previously in that territory, but I was a trainee. It was my turn. Go up there. You can do it. Da-da-da-da-da. So I started thinking about this intent, and the fact of the matter is, is every one of these customers that I was finding could use what I sold. And I knew what I sold was good product. So then I decided to take my time and get to know every customer in my territory and and build relationships with three to four deep, get to know them, let them get to know me. And after they got confidence in me, they might just buy, who knows? So I started with that philosophy. And sure as I get involved, people are telling me, we'll never buy from you. Oh, and by the way, our office being 100 miles away was a huge issue because this was servicing products. And then 
to just compound everything when you can't think you could possibly have any worse situation. I was selling Japanese equipment, and this was in the 70s. And to give you some background, my customers were in their 50s. That meant when they were in their 20s, they were all fighting the Japanese in World War II. So I've got below the top three tier equipment in the eyes of the industry. I'm selling a foreign machine new to the States. And back then there weren't a lot of Japanese products. Two people that were veterans of World War II that had fought the Japanese. So as I developed this strategy of knowing not if they could buy, but when they would buy, I became very patient in getting to know them. And as I did, they eventually, some of them started buying. Well, my biggest customer was a big potential company, and the CEO wouldn't see me, nobody would see me. I got to know the receptionist, and it was almost a joke. And as I would call on him, as I'd call on him, his secretary would come out and say, he's not going to see you, and I'd write a note, and it was, it was a total joke. So I would just stop in because I knew it wasn't a matter of if, it was a matter of when, but it was going to be a long haul. So one day, his secretary came out and said, he will see you. So I walk back in his office. He hits a button under his desk, and the door slams behind me. And the man proceeded to look at me and say, Dean, A, I don't like your company and the owner of your company. B, I was a bomber pilot in World War II. I will never buy Japanese equipment. So you're wasting your time. And I looked at him and I said, well, I'm not here trying to sell you. I just wanted to get to know you and introduce myself. Well, I don't care, da-da-da-da. And I asked him some questions because I had some things I knew about him. Next thing you know, he was talking to me. And then I said I had to leave. He then told me, Dean, why don't we get breakfast in a couple weeks? So we ended up having breakfast. Long story short is the man ended up and his team, who I knew, all became close to me and I was close to them. They ultimately became my biggest customer, and they became the biggest customer for the company. And this, a couple with the other clients I got in this bad territory, I was one of the top salespeople in the company now in the worst territory, allowed me to ultimately lead this company in sales as a head of sales before the age of 28. And this wasn't a small company. This company doing fifty million, and we grew it with this strategy from fifty million to eighty million to one hundred and three million. So we doubled the sales in two years. So when people look at me, they go, "Does it work?" The answer is yes. So it's not a matter of if; it's a matter of when. So when you look at this strategy, if you're a sales manager or a salesperson out there, you want to make this list. Look at who your customers are. Understand that they can buy what you sell, so quit trying to sell to them. Get to know them. <clears throat> As you get to know them, you'll find out that they're going to eventually say, can you help me? Then you close the sale, and guess what? You become hugely successful. So the operative word is never failed. So this week, look at every person and company that you could sell and say to yourself, it's not a matter of if, Dean, it's only a matter of when. Thanks for tuning in each week, and remember to share if this helps you. My book, Self-Talk, Think Like a Child, is available on Amazon. Uh, we enjoy selling that book to all of you out there. I think it'll help. Uh, and then if you have any questions, always reach out to help at adjunctceo.com. That's help at adjunctceo.com and closing point again it's not a matter of if it's just a matter of when we hope you enjoyed this week's show subscribe today to our podcast and send questions or thoughts to help at deanacres.com also, visit us at www.dnacres.com to listen to prior shows and view helpful videos. Also, great tips to download. Thanks again. See you next week.